All right, so what I want to talk about today is the mechanism behind the oxidative conversion of this halo ketone over here where we have chlorine attached to this ketone group. Uh, we have a methyl group and a chloro group. And into acetone where we just have two methyl groups attached to this um, carbonyl group making uh, acetone or dimethyl ketone. And I want to do this through the, uh, through the use of a reagent, an organocuprate, a dimethyl organocuprate, where we're going to have two methyl groups attached to a uh, organocuprate with copper and lithium. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what we need to do in order to affect this conversion. If you'll notice that the pi bond here is still going to be maintained, so the carbonyl is not going to be uh, changed, and of course this methyl group is also going to be conserved. So basically what's happening is we're going to uh, affect a substitution with this chlorine to be substituted by this methyl group, and that's what we want to do. So how is this going to play out? Well, First thing we need to look at is, of course, we have this haloketone, and as a ketone, it's going to have a carbonyl group by definition. This carbonyl group is going to have uh, draw in our oxygens. So if we do that, we're uh, on our oxygens, our lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen. We're going to have two lone pairs on this oxygen, and so what that means is that this oxygen is going to have a slight negative dipole, a partial negative charge, making the carbon that it's attached to, the central carbon of this ketone, to have a slightly positive charge. So we're going to have these, t uh, you know. Uh, slight dipoles are not complete, but what that's going to do is it's going to make this carbon here in the middle electrophilic enough to want to be attacked by one of these nucleophilic methyl groups attached to the um, organocuprate, that's part of the organocuprate. And so, you know, we can pick either one of these we want, so let's just take this one on the top and move this bond. It's going to attack this central carbon here. When it does that, it would make five bonds to carbon, which is not okay. So we need to go ahead and take some of these pi electrons uh, shared in the carbonyl here, and we need to kick these off as a lone pair onto the oxygen in the carbonyl. So let's do that. All right, and so what product does this allow us to uh, proceed to? Well, now we have uh, just the oxygen is going to be solely sigma bonded to that central carbon, so we have the oxygen with the sigma bond, but of course we have three lone pairs around the oxygen now. And three lone pairs around an oxygen with one bond means the oxygen is going to necessarily have to have, by default, a negative one charge. And, well, of course, we added this methyl group onto the bottom, so let's go ahead and add that there. And then this methyl group is conserved. I'm just abbrevi abbrevi abbreviating that ME here. And, of course, we still have our chlorine on the sides. We still have that halogen. Well, these two methyl groups now, if we look at the next part of our reaction, these are really awful leaving groups, so we're not going to want to look at those. But this chlorine here is a fantastic leaving group. So let's look at what's going to happen next with the reaction mechanism. Let's take some of these electrons that are lone pairs around the oxygen, and let's recreate the pi bond between the oxygen and the carbon by moving these electrons here. When we do that, once again, like we said earlier, carbon has five bonds, which is unacceptable. So these electrons here, uh, bonded to the best leaving group, in this case chlorine, will kick off onto chlorine, so we can create a chlorine anion that we can create chloride. So this will proceed to get purple ink back here. This will proceed to give us conserved copper in the middle. We've recreated the carbonyl here. Now the oxygen doesn't have any kind of charge on it because now look, we just have two lone pairs on that. And we have a our CH3 group on this side, which this one is here. And then of course our other CH3 group on this side, which is this guy. So what have we made? Well, we've just made acetone, but of course don't forget that on top of this, we also kicked off this chlorine. So we're going to have plus Cl minus because we've created a chlorine anion now. Well, we've just created acetone plus chlorine. So if we circle the acetone, that looks like the thing we were trying to get to originally, and it is a electrically neutral acetone. Of course, we still have those partial dipoles between the carbon and the oxygen, but that's always going to be conserved in any carbonyl or ketone. So this is what we've done. Let's do a quick recap. We have taken this um, uh, ketone with a halogen and or haloketone, and we have replaced the halogen with a methyl group to engender the creation of simply acetone. And we did this by the use of an organocuprate reagent, uh, dimethyl, copper, and lithium. We have two methyl groups attached to copper and lithium. And uh, we took one of these methyl groups, and of course we only had one equivalent because we only needed one equivalent. We let that attack this um, nucleophilic carbon. And I'm sorry, this electrophilic carbon, this nucleophilic group attacked the electrophilic carbon. And then we were able to, we moved pi electrons around, created a sigma bond to that oxygen in this step. Then we recreated that pi bond and allowed the chlorine to leave, um, which 
allowed the methyl group that was initially added to just be on the side here. And look, we have acetone. We're done.